It's Bryn with Backward Prints. I am here today to teach you a abstract watercolor class. Um, the idea was introduced to me by a really good friend of mine uh, who shared with me a couple years ago about an exercise where you, uh, it, was, it was this exercise on painting abstract with watercolors, but painting your pain and, or like a pain or a feeling that was within you and using color to express that pain or that feeling. And it was really interesting because I'm, as an artist, I've never really, <laughs> I've never really felt drawn to abstract art. I never really felt, uh, like, um, I love abstract art, I love viewing other people's abstract art, but I never felt like I could really make something beautiful that was abstract. So it's an, it's really, I think, helpful, especially right now with everything going on and, you know, we're all feeling a mixture of emotions. And I think sometimes it's really hard to understand what it is that we're feeling. We're not even always sure whether we're feeling anger or sadness or frustration or, you know, I, I have learned over the years that when I'm feeling frustrated and irritable and angry, that normally there's a sad emotion that is really uh, very deep, deeply uh, within, my, within, within myself. And in order to tap into that, there are a few things that I can do to uh, let that sadness out because burrowing it deep within us really doesn't do us any good. Um, so for me, you know, a few things that have helped kind of get that out, uh, well, has, has been art, but, um, you know, getting in nature and taking a walk. Um, and <laughs> interestingly enough, taking, or um, <laughs> jumping in the ocean even though it's really cold for some reason, helps me. But since we're all practicing um, social distancing, this watercolor class, I think, will be a really beautiful way for us to dive in. So take a moment, if not, if you haven't already grabbed your things uh, for this class, you are going to need some watercolor paper now there's different watercolor papers that you can buy. I am using this uh, product today. I actually ordered this on dickblicks.com a few weeks ago and it, I'm really lucky because it just arrived yesterday. And uh, I mean, any watercolor paper will do. Even if you don't have watercolor paper and you just want to dive in here, even if you don't have watercolors and you know, you want to just try this exercise, please dive in, grab some paper, some crayons, some colored pencils, some, if you only have maybe your children's paints available, grab your paint, their paints, um, grab your kids. This is something really fun for everyone. Uh, you will need, um, if you're, if you are doing the watercolor exercise, you will need, you don't need a lot of brushes. These are just a few brushes that I have. I mean, I have a lot of brushes, but uh, ideally, when you when you do watercolors, you want to have at least um, a larger brush. You want to have a small brush. Sometimes it's fun to have a brush that maybe these bristles are a little bit different. Um, it will help give you some different line qualities. And I mean, if we're talking really big brush, this is a flat, large brush, which is great for laying down. Uh, example would be the sky. Uh, so really allows it to blend really beautifully. And um, let's see, what else? Probably, I mean, you kind of, you want to at least have, I would say, if you're going to get started and you want to order some things online, three different size brushes, large, medium, small, some watercolor paper. This watercolor paper was on sale on dickblicks.com. And I mean, you can go anywhere. Support your local art stores, obviously, always first. Um, with this whole thing going on right now. I just have been trying to not go leave my house too much. Um, anyways, so some brushes are really great. 
and you want to have some watercolors now there's a bunch of different watercolors out there so uh these ones are actually really fun they're really colorful uh this is the brand that i found and i don't remember where i got these but you can also get really inexpensive you know just these are like children's watercolors uh that i found online that were i think under ten dollars and then you get really fancy uh dick blix does offer this this is a travel kit this is a windsor and newton uh, watercolor travel kit which was given to me on my 30th birthday which i'm not gonna lie it's kind of <laughs> hard to open all right so this is water some watercolors come in tubes and it's a liquidy form so you would actually pour out the color on the pigment onto your little palette and it will be wet when you lay it but you can leave it and then it, it dries out and you but you can just add water and then you can still uh, apply paint uh, these are really nice too they come out and you can use these to mix your colors the two paints are more costly but the colors are really really gorgeous okay so moving into this course i want everyone to take a moment and set their intentions that could be to just you know come from a place of love to you know no judgments to um just having fun um to letting go just simply for this moment right now just having fun and letting go and focusing on letting the color really just just don't even think i want you guys to use your heart for this class and i want you to feel i want you to let these colors and i want you to think about your what you're feeling your anger your frustration your sadness your your worry your your um the whatever it is that you're feeling i want you to use color to act as that feeling, you know, and uh, your like reds, like red can signify anger, blue can signify s uh, sorrow or sadness. Um, you know, if you're feeling really happy because, you know, you're, you know, you feel, maybe you feel happy because you're home with your family and um, you're looking at this as a, you know, glass half full situation and maybe you're just trying to, you know, you're doing your best which is what I'm doing as well you know and again you can you can see how like color is um, really plays into emotions here uh, so take a moment take a deep breath in and let everything out we're gonna do this two more times deep inhale One more time on your own. Okay. So let's begin. So you will need a cup of water. I am just using a restaurant plastic container. I like to save them. You, uh, if you have any paper towels on hand, if you don't, don't worry. You can use a kitchen, an old kitchen towel or a rag or something. These are the Marley Marley Monster um, reusable paper, non-paper towels that my mom bought me, and I love them. So really, just anything you don't mind getting color on or paint on. Watercolors are pretty nice because they do clean up really well. Uh, they wash well. So, okay, so you'll dip. I really, I'm not gonna talk too much here. I want you guys to just paint and have fun. Um, I myself have been, have been feeling not, um, just been there's a little bit of me that is just not so sure about what's to come so 
you know, it is a crazy time right now. But my mantra lately has been, I'm enough, there is enough, we all have enough. I'm enough. There is enough. There is enough for everyone. Everything will be okay. We will get through this together. So something you can explore here is wet on wet. I really love wet on wet. So you're gonna dip your brush in the water and I want you to just apply some brush mo movements here on your paper. Then I want you to dip your brush in the water again so it's wet but not too wet, okay? And then you're going to grab a color of your likings. I am gonna grab a blue. You might need, if you notice that you're dipping your brush in the, in the watercolor um, and it, it's almost too dry and you're not getting enough pigment, you can, you're gonna need more water. So you'll need to get your brush back in the water. Uh, most watercolor palettes have an area where you can kind of work on and put your color and dilute it. The more water you dilute to your watercolors, the, the more translucent that color will become. So I think, yeah, you guys can see what I'm doing over here. So this is like pretty much straight pigment right here. I'll show you. So if you lay in that pigment where we did the wet on wet, you just basically put, apply your brush here, okay? And now if you get that brush wet again with a little bit of water, it will help this run. You can clean your brush. You can grab a different size brush Try not to leave your brushes in your water. Uh, that can damage your brushes. So when you're always wash your always wash uh, your watercolor brush and dry it off on your little paper towel, your cloth, and set it aside flat. I'm gonna get a different brush and I am going to grab some green. You might hear my dog, Harley. I have a French Bulldog that's five months old. He is the love of my life and he has been helping me get through these times of uncertainty and I feel like I'm much more able to do the work that I wanna do right now because of him and I'm really grateful for that. So this is just, this is such a fun exercise. Most times we, as you know, humans, we overthink things and we want, we want everything to be absolutely perfect, almost to the point that it almost like freezes us to not even trying in the first place. And you know, art is all about exploring and experimentation and, you know, not not having expectations of what's gonna look like or how it's going to be. I think that oftentimes, you know, this ex abstract exercise is fun because you just paint what's in your heart and what's on your mind and, you know, you're just, really the art is unveiling to you it will end up kind of telling a story and you're the observer and you're the one who is going to have this most beautiful surprise when you're finished. And I think that's why I really love this exercise. Now, something that is wet, you can add, if it's sort of dry, like this, let's see, this is too dry. When I add 
water to something like over here I can add these water droplets and sometimes it makes a really cool effect now I taped this piece of paper down so well, normally when I work I would not have it taped down so that I can pick up the piece of paper and you can allow the water to drip and move move down bought this brush at an art sale a while back and it's really fun I had no idea what it was going to allow me to create or what kind of brush strokes but then once I got home I explored using it and it's pretty fun so it's got these little bristles at the end you the thing is with this kind of a brush you don't want too much water added in if you have too much water it will just be basically like a regular brush but if it's just the right amount of pigment you can lay down some very interesting lines I like using this brush when I am painting the ocean because you can create almost like the ocean ripples. So you can see now I have less and less and less, less paint. So you can see it's sort of creating You know, and this can be something that maybe you're like, this signifies you walking on your path and then, you know, things are getting crazy and then crazy could signify this like cluster of paint bubble and then maybe there's a moment that you feel okay and that could just be like the water or you, this could be you and... You know, we're just all doing our best here with what we have and what we can do. But it's amazing to see so many people reaching out and um, really working together. And a lot of artists are and, and dancers and and singers and all kinds of people from all around the world are coming together and offering, you know, some of their skills to us, going live or offering some free videos. I think it's just nice to have each other to lean on right now. And then we don't feel so alone, right? Watercolors is one of those mediums that it does take some time to get used to. You want to you want to really allow a little bit of time to let certain layers dry before continuing to work. It's all about layers, 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 layers. So really letting this dry and uh, you know coming back to it and just want to show you guys what you can do as well. I'm just gonna peel off these pieces of tape. I like to use masking tape when I'm working on a piece. Let's say something that I'm working on, you know, for days and days and days. I like to tape it off 
normally masking tape you tape all four corners so that way you remain to have a nice white border uh, if you when you don't have the tape there the fun thing is that you can I think you'll like this but you can now you can pick this up and I know you won't be able to see this for a second but I'm basically tipping this upwards and it'll allow the colors to run now if they're too dry there's nothing that will actually run so what you'll want to do is let's just say you want to throw down a blue a blue line here now we can throw down some blue and then we would need to pick up the paper okay and it's going to create these rip, little drippies now if you want more drips you're going to get your brush clean and wet or a little wet okay a little bit of water and now i would probably recommend a smaller brush also just let you know when you tip your paper your watercolors are going to want to drip <laughs> onto your work surface on the towards the bottom so i like to sometimes have a piece of um, a rag or a paper towel on the bottom and then that way i'm not getting water everywhere on my work surface or on the carpet so just keep in mind for those of you who have who are working and you know i don't want you guys to get paint all over your floor so as you can see i am just sort of adding water here which is helping to get some of these little drippies to go to work its way down you can also then flip the page and go back the other way you can you can see it <laughs> just got a couple drips and who cares i mean as long as it's on your counter right it's like who cares so now i just flip the piece upside down i'm hoping this is still within my here we go okay you can still see fabulous <laughs> fabulous and as i'm saying don't leave your paintbrushes in the water i totally just did <laughs> So this is something that you might want to, uh, you might want to almost be working on two separate pieces at the same time because with, like I said, with the watercolors, you want to give them an opportunity to dry. Uh, now something I saw earlier, uh, when you get your watercolor paper pulled out of the pad, you're going to notice, you're going to probably think to yourself, which side do I use? Uh, one side is super smooth and one side has more texture. I like using the side that has more texture, has more tooth. And watercolor will really, you really want, you want that tooth. You want that, you know, ability to, to have some more to cling on to. Okay, so for this next piece that I'll kind of start to work with I just want to show you the difference between using now these are paints that I bought uh, I think actually a few of you might even have these paints at your home so I'm gonna end this video and I'm gonna start a new one just for the sake of the size to keep these shorter and um, stay tuned to the second video. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Goodbye from Bryn.